Welcome back to Ferrani, I'm Joe B. Today I'll show you how to correct a lumbar FRSL. Let's dive in. A lumbar FRSL is when a singular or multiple vertebrae of the lumbar spine get stuck in flexion, rotation, and side bending to the left. When it's multiple vertebrae, then it's called a stacked FRSL. The cause of this can be due to tightness of the ipsilateral motifidus muscle, likely from a job that requires repetitive flexion, side bending, and rotation to the left. Trauma from a motor vehicular accident can also cause it. Position your patient in left side lying first with the rest of her joints above the spot you want to mobilize to all be side bent and rotated to the right side. As you can see, the upper torso above the L4 is side bent to the right and rotated to the right. You will then be in front of the patient with your right forearm leaning against the right anterior shoulder while the left hand pulls the ilium to the left to get the patient to tolerable end range first and take up the slack. Once there, use the patient's muscle guarding by having her rotate to the left against your resistance and hold it for six to seven seconds. This will cause her muscles to contract and following the principle of autogenic inhibition, any muscle contracting will have an equal relaxation phase afterwards. Kind of like the law of physics, that in any action there will be an equal and opposite reaction. This will allow you to rotate her trunk to the right further to gain more range and repeat three to five reps. After like one to two sessions of this, and once you've started gaining your patient's understanding and trust, then by the third and fourth sessions, you can progress to non-thrust mobilization technique. Position the patient and yourself the same and take her trunk to mid-range rotation by taking up the slack as tolerated for grade two mobilization. Once you get your patient to grade two mobilization range, you can already provide joint oscillations there for 30 reps. You ask the patient to breathe and during the exhalation phase, you rotate further as tolerated to get to grade three mobilization or up to the limit of the range. You can hold this particular position for 30 seconds. After that, ask the patient to breathe one more time. And during that exhalation phase, take her trunk to grade four mobilization range or at the limit of the range and hold for another 30 seconds. You can even provide oscillation for 30 reps as you get to either grade three or four ranges as that can optimize your patient's pain relief. During the non-thrust mobilization phase, do observe your patient's muscle guarding because if it is worsening, then it's probably better to revert back to muscle energy techniques. But if the muscle guarding is getting better, then you can go ahead and progress further into grade three or four of the mobilization range and eventually to thrust techniques. By the fifth and sixth sessions and onwards, then you can advance to high velocity, low amplitude thrust or thrust manipulation or also called thrust articulation. Position the patient and yourself the same and take her trunk to grade four mobilization or at the limit of the range. From there, you can deliver a high velocity, low amplitude thrust or a quick end range thrust. With this technique, you may feel a pop in her spine or a joint cavitation. A cavitation is basically when the nitrogen inside the joint comes out of the joint, resulting to a matter change from liquid to gas, represented 
by a popping sound. There you have it. To elevate your mobilization skills and have better patient satisfaction or outcomes, you have to think muscle energy techniques first, then non-thrust mobilization, then high velocity, low amplitude thrust manipulations. If your patient has an L3 FRSR, then the techniques will be the same. It's just going to be the position that will be different. In which case, your patient will need to lie on the right side. And then the treatment will be directed towards rotating to the left. A flexion, rotation, inside bending to the left vertebrae or FRSL can bring about a chronic localized dull aching pain on one side of the low back. There will also be limitation of motion pattern specifically towards extension, right side bending, and right rotation. The assessment for FRSL in this animation, we will assume that it is the L3 that is stuck in FRSL. There are two types of tests that determine lumbar symmetry, the seated lumbar flexion test and seated lumbar extension test. Since your patient is stuck on L3 FRSL, then to make that vertebrae stick out, you need to select the seated lumbar extension test. Patient is in short sitting position, feet flat on the floor, and arms across the shoulders. The therapist will be behind the patient. The iliac crest will be palpated first by the web space of the therapist's hands. Then the dominant hand thumb will reach across to arrive at the L4 spinous process. From there, the thumb goes down to the next inferior spinous process, which will be L5. Afterwards, the thumbs move two finger breaths laterally to arrive at the transverse process, which will be the major landmark to palpate to determine the presence of FRSL or FRSR. The patient is then asked to arch the back for lumbar extension. When doing this assessment, always start by palpating the L5 spinous process, then go to L4, then L3, then L2, then L1. Normal findings are that all the lumbar vertebrae transverse process should move forwards or become less palpable. Abnormal findings to confirm the presence of L3 FRSL is that the left transverse process will become more prominent during seated lumbar extension since L3 left-sided facets are stuck upward and backward. If it is stuck towards L3 FRSR, then the right transverse process will be more prominent since the right-sided facets are stuck up and back during the seated lumbar extension test. Repetitive seated or standing lumbar extension, right side bending, and right rotation active range of motion exercises can be performed for two to three sets of 10 reps. This can be progressed by adding 15 to 30 seconds hold each rep for stretching. A post-treatment seated extension test can be done to reassess the asymmetry and then transition as you see fit. But how do you fix a lumbar ERSR or ERSL dysfunction? Watch this video and find out. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please like, share, and comment. And for more therapy animations, please subscribe to Therani.